So today I want to show a basic demonstration of uh, using Design X on this black demo plate and just some of the things you can do with Design X and how it works, right? So as you can see, we have the 3D scan of this black demo plate and it's already aligned and it's the scans have been merged and it's kind of ready for the modeling stage because that's what uh, people tend to be the most curious about. We have all the tools to align scans to each other and align them to the world coordinate system. Um, and we can talk about that in some other videos. But for this one, I wanted to focus on uh, just showing the modeling tools here. Um, so the first thing to explain is DesignX is essentially a CAD package with all the uh, scan tools, being able to connect to scanners and process those scans like I have all these polygon tools and point cloud tools and I have the ability to crop them align them as I said before and I have all those so this product is kind of a marriage between those two different things the CAD and the scan all in one and then once we model or extract the information that we want to out of this we can then send that information over to CAD or even send that information over to other outlets for manufacturing like additive or straight to CNC uh, cutting packages. So to start off, the first important tool that I like to show is this concept of a mesh sketch. And you'll see that this is kind of the manual process. I like to show this because it is kind of the most critical tool within the software to understand before you kind of move into some of the other fancier uh, tools. So when I select that top plane, you see I can right click and go to mesh sketch here. And what you can do is drag that plane parallel to the top plane there wherever you want and intersect it through the surface of this part. There's a bunch of different options. We don't have time to cover all of them, but you know, one of them is that I can say I want to silhouette the entire part. Uh, you can cut multiple sections. You can limit it to just certain regions. There's like all kinds of different uh, variations of this tool. But for what we're going to do today, what we're going to do is go ahead and silhouette this entire part and then hit the checkbox. Now you see it takes us inside of the sketch mode, and you can see that we have a silhouette of the entire piece if I turn that on and off. So just like it when you were in uh, elementary school or whatever, and you stand up against the wall and they shine the shine the overhead and project a silhouette on the wall and you can kind of trace that outline that's kind of what's going on here with the scan data so once i have that i can go ahead and sketch over top of it now i always like to show this first if i just select the line this is a way that the the cad is interacting with the scan data as well if i just grab the line tool obviously i don't want to draw this with the line but what we can do is we can best fit to that data and I could add and remove from the selection to create uh, a line here, right? So I can do it that way. I can actually just, the, the software automatically tries to segment it for lines automatically. So it, it's looking for line segments. So one way is to best fit. Another way is to do this where I just click on that line segment area. And then if I double click, it'll accept that line. And I can come over here. And create more lines and this works with all the tools up here so I can best fit lines and things so what I'm gonna do speaking of that is I'll select all those I'll hit delete and let's come over to the rectangle tool the rectangle works the same way where I can come in I can select that and I'm gonna select a little bit of this flat a little of that flat and come around and best fit a rectangle to that data and then if I just double click it'll hit accept and I created that rectangle. Now you notice that it has uh, constraints on that. So it is saying that these are horizontal or vertical. You can apply dimensions to this. You can uh, apply relations. So if I needed this to be parallel to something else or perpendicular, so you have all those uh, relations, constraints, and dimensions in here that you would inside of CAD. Um, so again, just to kind of segment this out, I'm going to come in and select the circle, double click, and then now I'm going to go ahead and trim those two together. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to trim, boom, and create that. So I'm not going to spend time dimensioning it all. And let's just delete this dimension and 
do that one more time. I don't know what I did. I clicked and dragged, but there we go. So now I've created that outline um, in 3D. So if I get out of the sketch and turn on the scan, you'll see that we drew that on the top plane. And now I can go ahead and I can hit extrude and whatever sketch I have selected. So I can just select this one and I can just drag it down. Now you can do a blind extrude where I just extrude a certain dimension. I can snap it up to a region. I can do up to a point, you know, a vertex. Um, so all those different options are available there. And then when I hit OK, it creates the solid, which by default, the solids are hidden right now. So if I turn that on, I created a solid that's extruded through that. Now, the first thing I always like to show is I created this, but we would love to just, as we design, check the accuracy, the deviation. And I can adjust the resolution of that a little higher. So let's check, and you can use your mouse cursor and go across the top surface and see how far away, and this is in inches right now, that top surface is or the side surface is from the actual scan data. And you see here, if I roll over the bottom, you get a feel for the accuracy, like how closely I, and I can adjust that color bar. Um, and really, this is an inspection. What I'm really doing is just kind of validating. Did I model what I intended to model, right? I think a lot of times where this helps save you is you might think something's an extrude. You go ahead and extrude it, and you discover, oh, wait, that's not an extrude. Um, it is an extrude, but it also has draft on it, you know? There's lots of different reasons why this helps save you a bunch of time because you may not catch some of those errors. So that is the deviation tool and it's over here in the accuracy analyzer toolbox um, so to start off with i always like to show that basic process uh, from here knowing what i know there i can model almost the entire part here except for that handle with just that one tool that one piece of functionality um, from here let's talk about some of the other more automatic tools if i hide my solid um, I can go ahead, let's go ahead and model that interior area with uh, what we call a wizard. So before I go in, I'm going to select these two planes and I'm going to say, let's create a vector between those two planes. Another thing we're going to do is come over and turn on the regions. I have region groups I've created on here already. I went ahead and just ran the uh, region auto segment tool. And what that's going to do is it breaks up the mesh into different sections based on curvature. And you can adjust the sliders in that tool because depending on the part, it's easier or harder to break up these regions. But really what it's for is it's just an advanced selection tool that allows me to quickly select these areas and use them within other tools. Um, I, can, I can do a lot of things without regions, but it just makes it a lot easier. So what we're going to do is come over to the region uh, revolve wizard and come over and say, I want to do a revolve with these regions here. So I'm going to select those. And I can even say constrain it to this axis right here. And I can tell it over here in the result operator, I want to do a solid cut. So what we're doing is we're saying take all these regions, do a revolve cut, away from the solid body there. And what it's going to do is it's going to calculate that sketch automatically and do a preview for me. So you see there's the preview. And if you want, I can turn on the solid to preview that as well. And then when I hit the checkbox, you'll see that it cuts it away. I'll turn off the mesh. And it created a revolve cut. Now. Everything, we're a history-based modeler, so everything is over in the history tree. If I want to, these, these uh, wizards create the history too. So if I want to edit that, if it's not exactly what I wanted it to be, I can come over and I can add dimensions to this later. I can select that and say, you know, from this center line, let's go ahead and create it as this dimension and this dimension here. And I can override those if I wanted to. 
So again, it's nice to have that history to be able to work with it. So that's the first kind of wizard there is the ability to uh, do a revolve wizard. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. We also have the ability to do the wizards use a extrusion wizard. This one over here works really well for that. So if I come over for extrusion wizard and I say I want to model these as my sides, you can do this a variety of different ways. This is my extrusion, the sides. This is the top. And this is the bottom. And you'll see here in a second what we're doing. I'm going to say solid cut next and it automatically draws that sketch and previews it for me. And then when I hit OK, I'll hide the mesh, show the solid again, and it went ahead and extrude cut that for me. From now, um, you know, if I want to add those fillets in the corner, I can click that edge and come over to fillet. And we have another tool in here. Inside of the fillet command, there is this little estimate radius from mesh. And it'll actually look at the underlying mesh and calculate what it thinks that that should be. And I can I can uh, override it if I want to, if I want to make it a nice round number. And then I can even come back and select the others as well to go ahead and create that. And then hit the checkbox and we're good to go. And remember, at any point I can stop and check the deviation here. So from now, it's just kind of rinse and repeat over and over again. I can use my wizards or do it manually over and over and over again. I can select all of these areas and fit them. Um, you know, just to do it one last time, just to kind of show that concept here. Um, let's go ahead and turn that on, turn that off. But with the extrusion wizard, you can do multiples as well. So if I come over to extrusion, I could say maybe I want to do all of these guys at one time. And yes, they are a pattern, so I could model, I could uh, come into the sketch and do a one circle and pattern it around and, and do it that way as well. Honestly, that's probably the way I would do it. But this is just kind of showing the concept of I could select multiple areas as an extrude cut and then have it sketch all of those for me and create one operation to cut all of those. So that's just a neat little piece of functionality there where it can cut all of them at once. Now, yes, they're not a pattern, but I would do it as a pattern. Um, now, the final piece of functionality, there isn't anything on this part that really shows this piece of functionality, but I wanted to show that this exists. I always like to expose this regardless of what type of part that we're working with. For very complicated surface modeling pieces, a lot of times you need to be able to just create all these fancy lofted surfaces and things. And you can do that by coming over here to mesh sketch, uh, uh, 3D mesh sketch. Sorry, I'm clicking on the wrong icon there. 3D mesh sketch. And I can grab splines here and I could come over and I can just draw right on the spline. I'm just going to do this little section here. And I'm just drawing 3D splines right on the surface mesh. So if this was like a highly organic shape, right, like some sort of commercial product, um, industrial designed product, right, and it has all these swoopy shapes to it, I can draw a whole network of curves on that surface. And then I can come over to the add-ins here and go to boundary fit. And when I hit next, you can select how high of a resolution, how much smoothing you want applied to this, and it's going to fit a NURB surface patch to that area. So if I turn on my surfaces now, turn off my mesh, you'll see that it created that straight from the mesh. That's a super powerful tool there. And then actually, while we're on that subject of, you know, swoopy organic shaped surfaces, it is really handy to be able to fit with wizards, you can actually fit a lofted wizard as well. So if we go ahead and turn on our regions, I can select that area and say, hey, I want to fit a lofted surface to this area. And I'm just going to move the outer boundaries. If you think about this as like virtually upholstering, a, you're like grabbing the piece of fabric and you're applying it, draping it over 
except it's a surface, right? Over the surface of that shape. And I'm just making sure it completely bisects and extends past the outer shape, but it, it's going to completely intersect the shape of the part when we're ready to use it. Now, if I hit next, it goes ahead and fits that. And you can adjust the nodes on those splines. If I say that I want them to be 10 noded splines, I can add that in there and then check deviation from body. And you see here, oh, wait. It starts to pull away here or droop down. I can actually hold control on the keyboard and click on these and add extra sections. And I, I can move them around as well. So I, if I want to just click on these and drag them, I can do that. Um, not just do that the other way where I hold control. Now, you see here, once I'm done, I hit the checkbox and it creates that surface straight from that area. And while we're at it, just for the sake of I want to complete this, I can come over here and say I want to fit a surface primitive to this area. I want to fit a surface plane to that region and then hit OK. So now I have that the two, two surfaces. I can come over to Model and I can say, hey, let's go ahead and do a trim surface between this guy and this guy. And then make them both the target and then say, I want to keep these two. So I trim them to each other. It's, it's akin to like a trim mutual inside of SOLIDWORKS. So now I trim those to each other. And again, I wouldn't design it this way, but I just want to go ahead and use these tools just to, sh just to show how they're used in context here. So I went ahead and did a cut with those two surfaces that I trimmed together. So then if I turn that off, you see that I trim those together. So that's, ba that's a basic demonstration of Geomagic um, Design X. If you want to learn more, I have more videos available. You also have inside of the help, you can come over to the help tutorials, and there's tutorials built right into the software. Um, but the, for this final tool I'll show is this concept of sending this stuff over to SOLIDWORKS. So I can send this over to the SOLIDWORKS software by coming over and using this live transfer tool. And everything that I've designed so far will come across over to SOLIDWORKS. So when I go ahead and hit start, I'm going to click over to SOLIDWORKS and you'll see it come in. So we'll go ahead and hit start. And you'll see it creates a new part. And then it draws everything as we did inside of DesignX inside of CAD. And this also works for Inventor, NX, SOLIDWORKS and CREA. So again, Inventor NX SOLIDWORKS and CREO, it can send over as live transferred entities like this where they're native entities that come inside of CAD and you can use those. Um, and you'll see it's creating the history tree with editable features over here. So once you're done, you can send this part from SOLIDWORKS over to another SOLIDWORKS user and they can work with it. So this is that whole concept of live transferring something over to SOLIDWORKS. So it should finish here in a second after it's finished in that loft and that trim that we did together. So there it finished. So you'll see here it kind of leaves everything on. So if I just, I like to keep the filters up so I can turn all those things off. And there is my final piece inside of SOLIDWORKS. So if I just click on a feature and then go to a sketch, you'll see there is a sketch with all of the relations and constraints and everything in it that I could edit and work with. So there is a basic uh, design X demonstration of how you can take the black demo plate and extract some features and then send it over to CAD. Um, I hope this helps. Thank you.